Hello everybody, this is Bob Dwyer from the Wellesley Wine Press, here today with a live tasting of a wine that is going to be talked about quite a bit in the next few months, I predict. The 2008 Red Tree California Pinot Noir. Now people are talking about it because James Lauby from Wine Spectator the other day in a blog entry of his own um, uh, mentioned that he was doing a big blind tasting, uh, 20, 30 uh, premium California Pinot Noirs, and he um, tasted one that he thought was really outstanding, and it was this Red Tree. The reason it's interesting is because this wine uh, is eight dollars. I found it at the uh, wine shop today. It was not in with the rest of the California Pinot Noirs. It was off in the bargain bin as if it was nothing at all. When I called the shop to ask them if they had some available in the 2008, you know, it's very particular. I wanted it to be the 2008 vintage. They kind of chuckled at me, you know, like, oh yes, uh, yes, I do. You, I do believe we have the 2008, sir. So it's pretty funny. Let's crack it open. Don't like crack off the whole whole top just kind of came off here. That's interesting. I don't know if that could uh, be an indication of uh, the wine perhaps being spoiled or something like that, but let's uh, get right into it. I've never seen that happen before, actually. So um, here we are, the famous red tree. That's made its first appearance. Take a look at the color. It's uh, it's pretty full-bodied for for a Pinot Noir, uh, in my experience, especially like a you know like a California Pinot Noir like this one. I, I mean. Uh, I would expect this to be a, a, a lot lighter. One of the things that they were talking about uh, with, with Lavi was that the, the, the winemaker themselves didn't know what exact blending grapes were used in this. In California, you're making Pinot Noir, you can call it Pinot Noir if you put 75% or more of that grape in there. The other 25% is up to the winemaker. They can do whatever they want. So that's a subject of some debate about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but in this case, the, the winemaker didn't even know what those grapes were. So. See how it smells? Normally I would, uh, of course, you know, aerate this a little bit, but I wanted to uh, just crack it open and, and, and drink it the way, you know, maybe you normally would if you get back from work at the end of the day. It's pretty closed on the nose at this point. I'm not getting much of uh, anything at all. Maybe some light uh, cherries, nothing, nothing too exotic. Not really jumping out of the glass at this point, maybe because I didn't let it aerate at all, but it smells nice. Nothing, nothing spectacular. Uh, so, you know, some, some, some mild, uh, Pinot Noir aromas, but maybe not the earthiness I would expect, not the, um, you know, the spice I would expect out of a Pinot Noir. Let's give it a taste. Not bad. Not bad. I mean, nice, nice, um, not nice mouthfeel. Um, so some some uh, silky tannins, uh, a little bit of grip. It, it, it um, you know it, it leaves a nice taste in my mouth. It, it, it has um, so, some some nice uh, backbone at, at at the end of the finish. But I, I, you know I, I don't know overall, you know nothing nothing spectacular for me. Yeah, I mean I, I can't see myself saying wow this is this is one that's really incredible, really special. So. Certainly enjoyable. I mean, this wine is 12.5% uh, alcohol. Pretty low for Pinot Noir. It's not going to dominate the food. It's uh, certainly drinkable and enjoyable. I can't say I'm uh, experiencing the magic though. This, this cap has me a little bit concerned. It didn't really crack off the way it should. I wondered if it was. Uh, wonder if it was sealed quite appropriately. It doesn't taste bad or anything. It doesn't taste like it's it's spoiled or anything. So I think it's. I have to assume the seal was fine. But um, I guess overall, uh, I, I, I'm not. Uh, feeling the magic on this one. I would never pick this one up, you know, just if I open this one up and it says like a $20 Pinot Noir, I, I wouldn't be like buying more of it. But at $8, you know, may, uh, maybe I would buy, I don't know, maybe uh, three or four more bottles just to have around the summertime because $8 is a really good price point for Pinot Noir. I mean, I think it's hard to find a good Pinot Noir under $20. To get one for $8 is excellent. I'd probably rate this wine, you know, good, you know, meaning like, you know, between 80 and 85 points. Probably go, uh, I don't know, 84 points on it if I was giving it a numerical rating. But um, I'll do some more um, uh, tasting it with it here as the night goes on, and I'll post some thoughts and text be beneath this review. But I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick snapshot of this uh, soon-to-be hot wine, the 2008 Red Tree California Pinot Noir. Thanks for watching.